This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles, on the Rockstar Radio Network. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd on the Rockstar Radio Network. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Oh, top of the day to you. Well, we have a kind of a treat. Usually we focus on all things related to marketing and strategic planning and social media and all the components of of design and really the book, the physical book, whether it's ebook or print book. And I thought it would be fun today to focus on how to get the book here in the first place before you go to the formatting of the ebook, the print book, the video book, the audio book, fill in the blank book. And I have with me today one of my very favorite people who happens to be a muse, the writer's muse, and Ann Randolph does fabulous workshops for authors. She has quite an interesting pedigree. She is the, uh, she's been a director of, of Opera Colorado, the Center City Opera, and even the Colorado Symphony. And so she's got quite a musical background, which is perfect when it comes to writing because there are phrases just like in music, that things come together, they have to sing to you, and your writing has got to sing to the reader, connect with the reader, and whether it does it with kind of a staccato or whether it does it with, you know, that kind of punch or whether it's a smooth melody, but it has to pull the writer in, and Anne is the perfect person and she is uh, she is a, a frequent speaker with the Author You group, where we have done uh, salons and workshops with her. She participates in the Screenwriters Conference in Santa Fe, and she's really knows her craft. She's also working on her second novel, and her publication, Write Hot with Kitchen Table Writing, is available at her website kitchentablewriting.com as well as annrandolph.com. Anne, welcome to the program. Great. Thanks for having me. I'm excited about talking about writing this morning. Well, it, it's, a, it's a good thing to do. And actually, we should tell our, our listeners we've actually pre-taped this one. Oh, right. Uh, You're right. <laughs> afternoon is a great time to write. It, it, yeah, we're, we're in afternoon time. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. Well, a- actually, Anne, it's any time. It's any time yeah. because, because we have such a big listenership on podcast and iTunes. So let's kind of jump into this um, very quickly because our hour always goes fast. And why don't you just tell people right off the bat, how do you help them with their writing, whether it's fiction or nonfiction? Well, the main thing about, about writing is writing. And people, I believe that people already have the genius within them, and all we have to do is to come up with some fun techniques that lets that genius, genius out, that lets the genie out of the box, that lets the free spirit go. So our kitchen table writing is all about actually writing and letting what comes up when you're writing get on the page. Perfect. And so uh, you've got techniques that you talk about doing that. And you and you refer to the kitchen table because I know that you've done a variety of things around your kitchen table with a mug of soup, <laughs> not to, right. to leave us there, at any time during the day. So so brainstorm a couple of those activities that you like to do. And I guess maybe you might want to expand before you jump into that. What do you mean by kitchen table writing? Well, you know, I use the word kitchen table writing because I think that's one of the very best places to sit down and write, and almost everybody has a place they sit down to eat. And uh, so for me, kitchen table writing is when you're really free writing and you're letting the writing go. And so as opposed to being real logical with your work, you are uh, letting whatever comes out of the pen hit the page. And uh, it's a time to let your genius work. It's a time to 
to realize who you are in your writing, and it's a time for the imagination to flow. So I really believe when we first sit down to write, it's really like a writer's warm-up. We first sit down to write, we let anything come out of the page. It could be your grocery list. It could be uh, something on a novel you're working. It could be a paragraph out of your uh, how-to book. Or it could be, my mother got on my nerves yesterday. So uh, the kitchen table writing is when we really let things flow uh, when we're writing. You know, we did an exercise with you at a salon that we had uh, one evening at my home. And you had us write down a whole bunch of vegetables, fruits and vegetables. And then the next thing you did is you told us to, the next sentence had to use one of those vegetables in it. And I'll never forget, I mean, I laughed because one of the guys compared his wife to a radish. Absolutely. And, and then went after it. So it, it really is a free flow spirit. All right. So if you get into that, that flow, and you also talk about practice writing. And what's the difference between practice writing and writing writing? Well, you know, I really compare uh, our practice writing to what a musician does. The, you know, the question is, uh, it, when you start playing the violin, are you going to be on the stage at Carnegie Hall? Are you going to be playing for the Metropolitan Opera? When you start uh, dancing, are you going to be dancing with the uh, Alvin Ailey Ballet? You're not. And so these people that do uh, all kinds of musical things, they spend years and years practicing. So why do we think we can just sit down and write our novel or sit down and just write our how-to book uh, when everybody else has to practice. So practice writing is, is just absolutely required that we, we find out how the words feel, that we let the f- words go, that we know how the words smell and taste and what the touch of the writing is, a lot, is about. You know, there's that great joke, uh, there's a, a, a tourist that's in, in New York, and they're wandering around, and they finally stop in New York, and they say, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And the answer is, practice, practice, practice. And, uh, you know, we just think that we can write a book without any thought to it or without any, any background. You know, the, the piano player, the pianist, practices scales over and over and over again. And so it just makes sense that we're a better writer if we are doing a lot of writing. You know, well, you, the, line, you, the line is that uh, you really aren't a good writer until you've put in a million words. And it takes a little while to get to that point. It, it certainly does. And, and Anne, I, I just got to ask this, because you work with these, you've been working with writers for years and years or author, writers who want to be writers. Maybe one, we should say that. We have, because we have, you get a lot of wannabes that think they I can do it. I get wannabes and I get have-beens and I get people that are <laughs> and, they're, and they're just finding a new stimulus to, to work on mm-hmm. their new work. Why do, why do individuals think that they can write a masterpiece from the get-go instead of the practice. Why, why do they feel they have to bypass that when a musician, going back to using our m- m- musician, that they know they have to practice before they can get it? And you've got people who are gymnasts know that they have to practice or athletes know that they have to have tons of practice. Why do people who want to write think they don't? Well, you know, one thing happened when the computer got born. And there's the computer, and we can make sentences, and we can put it on the computer, and it looks like it's right. And, and we forget that there's form to our writing, there's style to our writing, there's voice to our writing, there's exploration of characters when we're writing fiction pieces, and there's exploration of characters when we're writing a nonfiction work because well, we have stories within our nonfiction work. What's the problem? What happened to this person? So there's, there's a real depth to our writing, and it doesn't come overnight. I mean, there are some geniuses. I don't even think maybe Faulkner did his writing and didn't practice some or didn't do some correcting of his work. But, uh, you know, it's so easy to throw words onto a page and to throw words onto the computer, and, but those words need to be cultivated and, and massaged and looked at and changed and moved around and... Uh, and we, we just think that books come when, as you know, and I know that sometimes it takes years, sometimes it takes months to actually get a, a book produced and actually get our writing going. 
Well, one of the things that you, since you talked about the computer, let's go ahead and open up on that because one of the exercises that I love that you do is that, and, and, and you tell people not to bring their computers because you just want them to what you call free writing and, and write from the heart. And I have, I have offended so many people that do their writing by computer, but I have a whole theory about that. All right. Well, let's get into that. So, so open it up. Why, why is it imperative for you as a muse, as a writing coach, to have people write with their hands? You know, it, to me, it is the real way to get to the heart of the matter. The computer, computer is so important. We use the computer in the afternoon when we're editing. I believe that our fresh writing, one of the best times for fresh writing is in the morning or very late at night or when we're very tired. But I really, really think that writing by hand is, is so important. It is a kinesthetic act. It's like cooking. It's like chopping vegetables. It's like touching beans. And th- we see and see feel and touch what our writing is like. And there's actually a true physiological theory that the hand is the closest to the heart. And there's actually a a vein or artery or whatever we call what goes on inside our bodies that actually runs from the hand to the heart. So when we write by hand, you're getting at the very, very deepest work. Now, I do a lot of writing by computer, and then if I get to a moment where something isn't really working, I will move away from the computer, open up a notebook, and then start just fresh writing, and I find that I get things that would never, never happen by typing. It's a totally different side of the brain. It's the vulnerable side of the brain, and I believe that in any of our writing, that being vulnerable is what people care about. So, so do you think that um, if you're, is there a different, I'm thinking about using your fingers on the keyboard, okay, the cork keyboard. Right. And then I'm thinking about um, using the flow of your hand. And so you're saying that that really is different parts of the brains that's operating there? Oh, no, it absolutely is. It's almost the left brain, right brain theory. Okay. And now I think there are some people who just aren't comfortable writing by hand, or it's a time matter. All right. Well, we're, when we come back from our okay, break here, great. we're going to get more into that. Okay, this is Judith Bryles. My guest is Ann Randolph, the writing coach, kitchen table writing. We'll be right back. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Is there a book in you or another? Author You will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good. If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has pizzazz, punch, and panache, Author U is for you. If you're a hobbyist or a casual author, it's not. Join Author U today through its website at authoru.org. Follow Author U on Twitter at Author U and on Facebook at Author U, where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily. Author U, where the author goes to become seriously successful. Change the way you publish online. WaveCloud is a new form for authors to manage all their books' information in one place from start to finish, including pricing and listing summary. To learn more or sign up for email updates, visit wavecloud.com. Every picture tells a story. 
And it's a truism that people do judge a book by its cover. Nick Selinger and NZ Graphics have been in the business of producing superior graphic cover design and interior layout for self-published authors, independent and traditional publishers for years. He has developed a reputation for excellent work, fast turnarounds, and best of all, affordable pricing. NZ Graphics also produces ebooks and book marketing materials such as posters, sell sheets, postcards, bookmarks, business cards, logos, and more. Books designed for his clients have won multiple book awards, including Best Book Award by U.S. Book News, multiple Evy Awards from the Colorado Independent Publishers Association, Indie Book Awards, the San Francisco Book Festival Award, and Freedom Medal Award from Valley Forge. Visit www.nzgraphics.com or call 303 985 4174 for more details about making your book the success it should be. Mention that you are an FOJ, friend of Judith's, and that you heard about NZ Graphics on your guide to book publishing. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, usually we talk about publishing, 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 but the critical part is if you don't write well and if you don't write to connect and if your reader is clueless what you're trying to connect with them about, you need some help with writing. And we've got with us one of the best in the country, Ann Randolph, who is superb as a muse for writers. She has her website, Kitchen Table Writing, and just before we went to break, we were talking about the um, whole area of, of writing, physically writing with your hands, feeling things, versus writing on the computer, using different parts of the brain. And I can remember when I was working on my second book, and I was writing, this is when I, we wrote them on the old yellow pad, and I was working on it, and my secretary was after me to get a word processor. Now we are dating ourselves. Um, and this is back in the early 80s. And and I thought that, you know, the typewriter, the IBM 50-page memory typewriter was the cat's meow at the time. And Louie was pestering me to get a word processor. And I remember saying to her, but Louie, I need, I need to feel my words as, as I'm writing them. And she said, J.B., I am tired of feeling your words as you rewrite them. But what Anne is saying is you need to have that feeling, right, Anne? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. To get to the real heart of the writing, sometimes I call it the white-hot center of your writing, you, you want to be closest to uh, how you feel. You want to be closest to what's going on in your body. You want to uh, allow, you, you want to weep, you want to laugh. You want to shout out loud, and and it, it, the writing is a live event where you are actually doing something and experiencing something, and and the main important part about that is when you are experiencing an event, when if something makes you tremble, if it really makes you tremble, then your reader will tremble, and that's what we're about is connecting to the reader, that the reader can feel what's going on in our hearts. And that writing by hand puts us in that place. So the feel really is critical part of the whole thing. It, it absolutely is. And, and in the afternoon, we use our logical brain. Or when it, we have a creative time for writing, and then we have that editing time for writing. And it's, I almost suggest going to a different chair, that you have one place that may have a beautiful view that uh, – is nice looking or that you feel comfortable in and that's where you sit and you do your creative writing and then you go to your computer and it, things are logical and you edit and you move things around. But you know there are th some people who really are only comfortable writing on the computer and I suggest a couple of things. 
if you are a, a true computer writer, when you're doing your creative writing, rather than looking at the screen, you create what I call a movie mind. You look above the screen and you create a movie space and you watch that movie in your mind and you write down what's going on in that film. The, the, to look at the screen makes us want to edit and move things around. That's really, that's really one of the parts of what I call my rules for this writing. But one of the most important rules is when you're fresh writing or kitchen table writing, you do not worry about spelling, you don't worry about grammar, you don't worry about punctuation. That we've all been through eighth grade uh, grammar, so we all can fix things later. The spell check on the computer, th that can happen at another time. But if you don't worry about spelling and grammar, sometimes these very magical, magical uh, things happen on the page. Like I uh, occasionally have written down, uh, I'm worried about my weight, about, you know, if I have gained too much, too much too much from eating. All right, so I'm worried about my weight, but when I wrote it down on the page, it said I'm worried about my W-A-I-T. I'm worried about waiting, which is a whole other cue into something to really write about. What am I waiting for? Am I waiting too long? Is that what's waiting, W-E-I-G-H-T, is that what's waiting me down I've made that genius mistake. And so we, we let those mistakes happen. You know, I also say when you're writing by hand, you don't want to cross out. We think so much, oh, I know that sounds bad. I've got to move this. I've got to correct the spelling on this. But I say don't cross out because that puts negative energy on the page. So if it's something that you really, you know, your logical brain hops in and you really think, oh, this isn't really what I want to say, I say slap it into parentheses. So you can find it, you can fix that later. I also say sometimes in our writing workshops, uh, people will write and then they'll read aloud what they've written. And I always say uh, if it's something that just is really t a tiny bit too personal, it's great that it's on the page. Slap parentheses around it. And when we read out loud, you can just skip that part. But acknowledge yourself that you put something really, really deep on the page. I also, I also believe in timed writing. And, uh, and I think that's so important because with timed writing, uh, with timed writing, we know that we're going to sit down and we're going to be free for just a special amount of time. So I'm going to write for five minutes. I'm going to write for 20 minutes. I'm going to write for an hour. And what I do is set my actual timer. And with that timer, I am free now for 20 minutes. I don't have to worry about anything happening. And when the timer goes off, then I close the piece that I just wrote. Um, our bodies will naturally give ourselves a beginning, middle, and end. If you know you're going to write for 10 minutes, you will start, you will have a curve to your writing, and you'll have an ending to your writing. So I think timed writing is, is major important. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Since 1987, Color House Graphics has set the standard for quality book production. Whether you decide to print a small quantity of books or need a large print run, depend on Color House to help you. You'll receive professional help and advice the moment you reach one of our representatives. If you mention hearing about us on your guide to book publishing with Judith Bryles, we will provide you with discount on the first order you place. To speak with a project manager, call us toll-free at 800-454-1916 or visit us at www.colorhousegraphics.com. Do you need postcards that make a statement? How about business cards, flyers, brochures, or NCR forms? TuVets is the solution for all your printing needs. Providing services specially designed for authors, we deliver exceptional quality colored printing. 
Most important of all, we specialize in reducing your printing costs. No more waiting. No more standing in lines at your local printer. Online proofing. With our pricing tools calculator, you can get instant quotes on all your printing products, as well as shipping rates all over the United States. Just a few clicks of the mouse and you're on the way to discovering how easy and convenient online color printing should be. Contact our friendly, human, account representatives. We recognize that you want answers, not voice prompts. Visit our website at www.tu-vets.com or call 1-800-894-8977. When Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title, enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right. Well, coming up, starting this afternoon is the Author You Extravaganza. We kick it off with the amazing and extraordinarily knowledgeable John Kramer in a deep dive dinner workshop that is sold, 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 and sold out. And, um, and it will be a great event. And then tomorrow, on Friday and Saturday, we have a, a variety of experts coming in from across the country as well as attendees, including people from England and Australia and Canada and Mexico, all descending into Denver, Colorado, to do the Author You Extravaganza that we hold each year on the first weekend in May. So it starts Thursday afternoon and then Friday, Saturday, because I think you need a day off before your work starts. So we never do workshops on Sunday. And if there's any chance that you can make it to Colorado, you need to probably send me an email saying, hey, I am coming and I'm going to be there Friday, so we can see if we can get you in. And that would be at Judith at Bryles.com, J-U-D-I-T-H, at B-R-I-L-E-S dot com, and I will respond back immediately since my iPhone lives on my hip or in my pocket, whichever the case may be. And Anne Randolph, who is our guest and an amazing writing music coach, will be there. She's going to have lots of goodies she's going to give away. She will be in one of our exhibitors with others, and there is just a huge amount of information. This year's emphasis is on marketing, primarily on marketing, whether it's an e-book, a print book, an audio book, a video book. There's going to be trailers. There will be the design, how do you really put together a cover that rocks and rolls so it markets to your reader, your audience. It's a lot of real estate, and most authors, unfortunately, waste it and don't get it. They end up poor design, poor content, no hooks. So you're going to learn how to do that. 
and we'll be there to show you how to do a variety of things, but what's most important, to create a book that does not get closed in the first sentence, in the first paragraph, or unfortunately, the average book is closed by page 18, because that's when the reader will give up if you don't have quality content that hooks them and invites them in. Ann Randolph, our guest this hour, is the uh, brains behind Kitchen Table Writing. She is a muse, and she will show you how to keep the reader engaged. How's that sound, Ann? Sounds great. Yeah. All right. I know you talk so, about keeping the reader engaged because uh, really the, oh, there's, a, there's a wonderful agent named Donald Moss, and he uh, has talked about you must have tension on every page. Every page has to have something that keeps that, that reader uh, tied into your work. And, and that, you know, that's just not fiction. That's nonfiction, too. No, absolutely, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at a book right now that someone has sent me to look at to uh, book shepherd them on, and I said, well, you certainly got your quantifiable information here, but there's no real, um, not t- I, it wasn't touchy feely. I wanted to say, but there was there was nothing to invite me in. I mean, the last thing I want to read is a bunch of tables that you've got to, and it was about real estate, what you've got to do is bring me in and give me some setups. Tell me why this data is important, at least. And stories are really terrific for that. And, and no, a I story love story. is a tiny novel. Mm-hmm. And, somebody and, has and, a problem. Some, somebody is leading an ordinary life. They have a problem. The house goes into foreclosure. They have to solve that problem. And these are the steps they might take. And then there are the obstacles, because all good writing is about obstacles. What's in the way of their getting there? What keeps things from happening for them? And then how do they overcome those obstacles? It's the obstacles that, that give the tension to the work and really tie people into the page. Well, and, and that's unfortunate that people who write nonfiction don't realize that because the reason why you're, you're writing nonfiction, dear listener, is you're going to solve someone's problem or you're going to reduce their pain, ease their pain, and you do it by that connecting. So stories is the perfect way to go. I right. absolutely agree with her. All right. You know, one of the things I wanted to bring up before we went to break was about um, we, you were talking about the, some of your rules. Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about spilling. Don't worry about grammar. Don't cross things out if it's wrong. Just, you know, parents it or just leave it alone and you'll come back, readdress it. I think one of the problems that people get caught up in, because a lot of authors um, stumble into things like dragon speak, and they will use that, but they sit and they watch their computer as they're dictating and saying it, and all of a sudden they realize, uh-oh, it, it didn't hear the word right, and or they want to edit it or spell it. And so I've always told them, do not, do not, you are not allowed to look at your computer if you're using any kind of a dictating software because it's going to screw up your flow. Well, that's the same of having the, the movie mind, that you're looking away from that computer and, and you're in real life as opposed to in the tap, tap, tap of what's going on on the computer screen. Exactly. So you, you've got to really stay in touch with that and know where you're going. Well, let's hop along and, and look at this. And you have um, a couple of other things besides some of your rules. And you talk about start lines to jumpstart creativity. So what's a jump line? And give us some examples of how that works. Oh, I am such a believer in a start line. And, uh, you know, a fun thing to do is to take uh, index cards and put start lines on index cards or on little pieces of paper and drop them in a basket. And then when you sit down to write, you just pull up a line and it gets you going. And uh, it, it, so many times, to write is a matter of sitting down with the pen and the paper in your hand. And it, a lot of times we say, I'm blank, I can't think of anything. Well, that is solved completely by a start line. Um, and some real Good examples of start lines. There are words like, phrases like, if only, or she could have, I never thought, it shouldn't have happened this way, I meant to. And you know, there's, if you think about the lines that I just gave examples of, there's something that connects them all together. There, it's not, I went to town, I went. It is uh, something, if it hadn't, 
it's too soon to know. Because I think with the best start lines, we tap into that yearning or that longing, and that's how we touch what the problem is. So in nonfiction, there's a problem, and the problem gets solved. So if we can tap into that, what's going on in the heart, the longing, the yearning with what we're about to say, we touch that audience, and we touch the audience's yearning as well. I also believe a start line can be any line, any word. It doesn't even have to make sense, uh, but it gets you going. I always tell my writers that uh, take my start line, write it down at least three times, and something should start flowing. But if something doesn't start flowing, then start writing against that start line. Just make up your own line and keep something going. If it hadn't, then you can say, this is the dumbest line I ever heard. I'm going to write about it hap- It happened. It did this this time. So you can change these start lines. But all we're doing is getting that pen flowing, getting something going with a start line. A couple of my writers have said what's what really touches them in our workshops is the surprise, that they come, they don't really know what they're going to write about, and I give them an opening, and it goes from there. And sometimes the writing that they do has nothing to do with the if-only line at the beginning, but it just gets them going in it, and it's a way to tap into that writer's energy. Well, you know, I love this exercise. I remember I've done this a couple of times with you myself, and it is amazing what pours out of your hand because we're doing this by hand, remember, everybody. We're not using our computers. This is writing by the hand. And I found that it not only did it flow out, it flowed like in a, a torrent, um, that, that it, it just in a couple of minutes there was a couple of pages written up. I was amazed. Well, absolutely. As, you know, for people that are writing memoirs, so many times we start off and say, I was born in Prattville, Alabama, and I did this and this and this in my life. Well, there is quite honestly nothing more boring than that. And if your memoir begins with, if it hadn't been for, and then if it hadn't been for my grandmother, if it hadn't been for my grandfather coming across in a wagon, if it hadn't been for, then you're really beginning to tap into what is the real story. Or I never thought that. So something, something that just has that, that element of not known. What do we not know? You know, another exercise I do uh, uh, with almost every new class and almost every major uh, conference is I have people tell us something that very few people know about them. Which and is always a lot of fun. And it's just, it, it is a great way to find out who somebody is. Yeah. And it is so much more interesting to know what nobody else knows or few people know than to say, what do you do? What do you do? I'm a writer. Well, so what? But if people find out that I worked, at, I sold trucks on the, or made trucks on the Ford Assembly line, then that's a story. Perfect. Well, we're going to come back and we'll continue with that part of the conversation. In a few minutes, I'm Judith Bryles, and with me is Ann Randolph. We're talking about writing. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these on the Rockstar Radio Network. Writing and reading are moving to the cloud. WaveCloud represents a whole new community for writers and readers to connect, communicate, evaluate, and share. Writers hone their craft and build their business. Readers build their favorites. Sign up for updates at wavecloud.com. shepherding concept is simple the publishing world is changing and so must you you need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create strategize develop publish and achieve your publishing goals 
You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need The Book Shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. Follow Judith on Twitter at My Book Shepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types including side sewing we provide warehousing kitting distribution inventory management a new print on demand facility streaming browser based ebooks and bookstore call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project you can also visit our website at www.tps1.com Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask on the Rockstar Radio Network. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. So we're talking about writing, 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 and Anne and I have been talking, or and mostly talking here about some of the things can happen to to snap up and um, sparkle your writing. And one of the areas that so many people want to write in, especially beginning writers, is they want to do a memoir. And I and I've always said when I'm working with them is the memoir where you should start. Maybe you need to start with your expertise and bridge you know, build your ground surface, and then introduce them to the memoir. I mean, there's different strategies of introducing bodies of work. But in writing a memoir, there are some techniques. And one of the things that Anne was saying, you don't start off that I was born in Omaha. Um, You you need to have it a little bit more snap, crackle, and pop. So we want to spend this last segment talking about how to develop those snap, crackles, and pops. And we're going to actually do it through our five senses. So, Anne, what are the, some of those senses, and how do we do that? Well, I believe in the, uh, using the senses in everything we do with our writing, and uh, and I do have a huge variety of exercises that, that really get us going with the, with the senses. One of the very, very best is smell. And I often will pass out little bottles, and people people open up the little bottle, and there can be the smell of vinegar, or the smell of uh, soil, or the smell of perfume, or the smell of... Um, the apple cider tea, and it is amazing that a smell will take us somewhere. It always works. So if we're a little stuck in our writing, I suggest going into the spice counter and opening up a spice out of your out of your kitchen and smelling that spice, and then sitting down immediately and writing. What does the lavender remind us of? What does what does that apple smell remind us of? Is that grandmother's apple pie? Is that uh, the lavender? The smell of sheets? The smell of earth? Is that when I was frightened in the garage outside my house when I lived on a farm? A smell will send us somewhere. It always works. Another great sense is uh, is actually sight. 
what do we see? I so often have people bring uh, some pictures from their past pictures from their life, and they'll spend a little time and they'll look at that picture. It might be a picture of them as a child on a swing. It might be a picture of their mother and father. And rather than writing about the picture, I have people write about what isn't in the picture. So it's a picture of my mother and father, and what isn't there is the woman that my father had an affair with. What isn't there is I ran away from home and I'm not there anymore. And Sight will get us into uh, into our writing. And then I also, another one of my favorites is I'll bring a big basket that's just filled with things, a salt shaker, a butter spreader, a postcard, a broken cup, and people will pick an object, and from that object they will start writing with one of the start lines. If only, if only that cup hadn't broken. If only I had the key to my mother's house. I really wish that I had mailed that postcard and then such and such wouldn't have happened. And so the senses are amazing. And the one that's really the most delicate to do is taste because when people taste something, it's almost, it, it's, it's very intimate for people to put something in their mouth and taste an olive or taste a piece of grapefruit or a piece of ice. And something happens because it puts us into that whole set of sensory writing. So it, when you know, people talk about writer's block, the very best thing to do for something like writer's block is to go smell something or to put a piece of uh, pineapple into your mouth. And then I remember Hawaii from that piece of pineapple. And then it takes you on a whole different venue. Absolutely, on a journey. And then also when we're writing, we want to put the senses in our words. We want to talk about how things smell and how things looked and uh, what did it touch, what did it feel like, what did that little naked mouse feel like when, when your father picked it up out of the, uh, the nest of mice. What, what is, what's going on? What is tactile? And that makes the reader also Feel, smell, taste, touch, mm-hmm. and 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 that's where you know that's what that's why I actually love a, a, a the feel of a real book because I am so tactile. I mean, I I like I like to smell it, I like to touch it, I like to to open it up and eat, feel the pages breeze in my face. I mean, I love all that sensing, and I know that flows through. And when I'm writing, and when I move into that what I call my zone or the bubble, and that's when true. I'm there, I'm there. And, you know, color is so important in our writing. I also have, I have a, a great exercise where I have, this is for memoir writing, and I'll have people uh, write down their life in 10-year segments, so 1 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. And then I get them to give that a title. So, like, age 1 to 10 could be my white column house. Page 10 to 20 could be piano tap dancing, and Girl Scouts. But you, you give each of the areas of your life a title, and then for each area of your life, you pick a color. The white column house was a light-colored pink. The uh, piano lessons was black and white like piano keys. And then for at least 15 minutes, I like to have people write about the color, but rather than saying red is the color of Barnes, the opening line is, I was red, I was yellow, I was yellow when I thought about having my divorce, I was green when I found a new life. And so they really write about these moments in their life or life-changing moments through a color. It's also fun when you're, when you're talking about life-changing moments is to come up with an object that reflected that moment. So an object could be a car, was when I got in my car and I drove away, or it could be a broken glass or a, a wedding ring or a, uh, a blanket from the first child. And, and uh, that goes back to the senses where people write about how did that blanket feel? How did that blanket feel when someone else touched that blanket? What happened when that blanket disappeared or got so tattered that it couldn't be used anymore? 
And uh, so once again, senses, color, taste, smell, mm-hmm. it gets us into the heart of the matter. All right, so those are, those are critical things. Actually, it, we're, you're talking about memoir, but, but I, I think that those go with any type of writing, um, moving them into the space or getting them ready because there's, I, I view, it's, uh, for me, getting ready to write is almost like a nesting. I mean, I have to do, there's a decluttering that goes on, and that doesn't mean I've got things spick and span, but it means I have to move things visually away from interrupting me. Um, so I, I don't get distracted. So I can just totally focus. And part of it, I've always said, is that when I'm in, if I'm working in my office, no one gets to come around. You just stay away. It's like the, the crime scene yellow tape is across it. No, or, absolutely. Or wherever absolutely. I go. That's why very early in the morning is a great time to do kitchen table writing because, it's number one, it's before the phone has rung. It's before it, before people in the house have waked up. I mean, if you write at 5 in the morning or if you write at 6 in the morning and you put in a concentrated hour, it's before anything else has happened. And what's also important about that is it's you are still in that sleepy time mode. So you are still close to the, your subconscious, close to that time of dreaming, where the dreams come from. There's a great book by uh, Robert Olim, O-L-E-M, Butler, called uh, uh, from where dreams come, and it is all about writing at that very moment before the rest of the day has clicked in. Oh, wow. Okay, so, Anne, we've got about two minutes left. Oh, great. I want you to tell us, you know, how can listeners commit to their writing, and before we leave, what are you currently working on in your own writing, and and then, of course, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, great, great. Oh, you know, I, I think that, We must make a commitment to our writing. People say, I don't have time to write. Well, then open up your calendar and schedule time to write. Say, I'm going to write for an hour and a half every morning between 6.30 and an hour and a half from there. Or I'm going to write in the afternoon between 4 and 5.30. But we really want to set that specific time to write. Uh, I also suggest if people really want to get going, uh, I actually have a program called Write at Home. But you can do this on your own where you write for 30 days and you make a commitment that you're going to write. You decide a sentence or 15 minutes or uh, for 45 minutes for a 30-day period, and I get people to sign a contract with themselves, and they say, I commit to this promise of writing first thing each day before I move on to any other project, and they sign it. And, in fact, if the listeners uh, want to send me an agreement that they'll write every day for 30 days, I'll give them a prize. All right. So, and how do they do that? They, uh, do I'm Ann Randolph uh, and. I'm AnnRandolph.com or AnnRandolph at KitchenTableWriting.com. And uh, if anybody wants to contact me at any of those, I will, I will give you a very, very special response. Perfect. All right. So as we, as we wrap up here, Anne is spelled A-N-N-E. So it's A-A-N, A-N-N-E, Randolph, A-R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H dot com. And just go to her website, and you can just hit that contact button and send it to her and say, I want a contract to get going on this writing. I am ready to get going to become a star. How's that sound, Ann? That sounds good to me. Perfect. All right. So join us again. This is Judith Bryles. We'll be at the extravaganza all weekend, authoru.org. We'll be back next week with another great show. But meanwhile, keep on writing, keep publishing, and do it with Quality. I'm Judith Friles. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryle.